speaking. speaking. Great. Yep. Okay. I'm on. Okay. You can start. <laughs> okay. Um, Thank you very much. Straight away, I'll start, right? Okay. okay. Um, well, my research here is, um, you know, focus on cybersecurity and defense and why is it important to maintain public order and international uh, internal security of Muslim nations. Um, so let me see. This one, right, put here. So here, cyber cybersecurity, it means the protection of computers, networks, and data. And this is a very serious concern of individuals and organizations, public and private, as well as national and international. Um, cybersecurity not only uh, is not only technical, but it's also political, and as you can see later, it's also economic, legislative, and it gives also social problems. Um, what I'll do is, um, I will do this. Uh, Sorry. You can see the statement run. You can. Um, yes, you can I just want to make it bigger. It's okay. It is it's all right. Big. Okay. All right. So, cybersecurity. Okay. I'll have uh, five statements to highlight the importance of uh, cybersecurity yeah. protection. Can you hear me? So here, cybersecurity protection is especially crucial for the defense of any nation, as any data breaches or cyber attacks can lead to public disorder and a threat to internal security. And now, as we can see, the Russian invasion of um, uh, Ukraine is also a threat to global security. So nearly 40% of the World Economic Forum leaders cited cybersecurity as a clear and present danger to the global economy. So if data breaches and cyber attacks are not efficiently managed, it can lead to a crippling of the economy and eventual downfall of a nation, which we will see later on those cases. Now, with technology constantly evolving, cybersecurity becomes more and more of a concern, and government has to really invest in uh, cybersecurity technology. So today, nation states are faced with cyber attacks on critical infrastructures to cripple their economy and lead to eventual downfall of the nation. So what is critical infrastructure? So these are sectors, important sectors, like information and communication, banking and finance, energy, physical distribution, and human services. So if you attack information and communication, you are also uh, exposing the other sectors, and they're going to be vulnerable to cyber risks. So cyber risk is now the greatest risk facing our economy and is a global problem which requires global cooperation. Cooperation. So serious cyber attacks committed or backed by a state against another state can be prevented through international cooperation. And this one, if it could be achieved. So according to the World Economic Forum, Global Risk Report 2021, uh, the top three short-term risks are infectious diseases, income inequality, and extreme weather events. But low priority is given to cyber risks to government, nation states, and private companies. So while there is some degree of global cooperation for addressing the above issues, uh, to date, there has not been that same level of cooperation around cybersecurity. So what are the forms of cyber attacks? It can come as cyber crimes, cyber espionage, uh, cyber terrorism, and cyber war. So we will look at state-backed cyber crime. So these are you know, attacks on critical infrastructure, and there is a new form of warfare, which is a cyber war. So this one, these are hackers who work for the government and have state immunity for their crimes. State-sponsored cyber crime can bring down essential services or critical infrastructures of other countries. 
they can hack into the network of electricity department and take down the entire grid so that people are left without power for days. So let's look at a case one. Russian hackers uh, was um, allegedly, allegedly carried out a cyber attack on Ukraine's biggest private energy conglomerate, DTAC Group, in retaliation for its owner's opposition to Russia's war in Ukraine. So, however, the April 2022 hack was thwarted as claimed by Ukrainian officials. Let's look at case two. In 2015 and 2016, the same Russian hacking group, Sandworm, cyber attacked electrical, electric utilities in 2015 and 2016 that cut power in parts of Ukraine. So the Ukraine energy providers have constantly been the target of Russian hacking teams since Russia annexed Crimea in 2014. And this one the, is a, the US Justice Department blamed Russia's military intelligence service, GRU, for these cyber attacks. Now, cyber threats, um, these are the, some cyber groups have threatened uh, to attack, you know, because uh, they are retaliating against the, um, the US government for perceived cyber offenses uh, uh, due to the Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the unprecedented economic costs imposed on Russia. So some cyber crime groups have publicly pledged support for the Russian government with the threat of such cyber operations coming in re retaliation for perceived cyber offensives against the Russian government or the Russian people. Now, this intel was provided by the cybersecurity agency of the countries comprising the Five Eyes Alliance, which, is, which also warned of a possible rise of cyber attacks and cyber sabotages. So the Five Eyes is an intelligence alliance comprising Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, and the United States. Uh, Microsoft in an April report made the case that Russian hacking has sometimes been used in tandem with kinetic military strikes. A cyber hack attack hit a Ukrainian broadcast company on Mar March 1st, 2022. And then the same day, a Russian missile strike against a TV tower in Kiev. So this is a new form of warfare, which is cyber warfare, in which cyberspace is strate strategically used to facilitate conventional military attacks. So this kind of cyber enabled physical attack will first disrupt the critical infrastructure to facilitate a physical attack on a military target. So the top three cyber attacks cyber leaders are concerned about would be, of course, as we have discussed above, critical infrastructure breakdown due to a cyber attack, and then we have identity theft and ransomware. Um, why organizations, the business organizations, they'll be more concerned about ransom, ransomware, social engineering, and malicious insider activity. Uh, what we're more concerned about is what the global cybersecurity challenges are. So, <clears throat> there are uh, the cybersecurity challenges have become more complex, and the complexity of digi digitalization means that. Governments are fighting different battles from fake news intended to influence elections to cyber attacks on critical infrastructure. So with risk mounting, decision makers and leaders need to acknowledge that cybersecurity is a national security priority. Uh, the next challenge would be the fragmented and complex regulations. So privacy and data protection regulations are necessary but it can also create fragmented and sometimes conflicting priorities and costs for companies, which can weaken the defense mechanisms. Um, policies must be creative in increasing protection while decreasing regulatory complexity. Of course, cooperation among different policy makers is critical here. <clears throat> so dependence on other parties here, we say that cybersecurity cannot be addressed in silos. It is vital to have an inclusive and cross-collaborative process involving, involving teams across different business units to make sure there is an acceptable level of visibility and understanding of digital assets. Um, 
lack of cybersecurity expertise. So this one comes at the top of most security, uh, cybersecurity challenges, the cybersecurity skills gap. Organizational priorities should include a proactive plan for each business to build and maintain its own cybersecurity workforce. And this is one thing, it's so difficult to track cyber criminals because uh, cyber attack poses a technical challenge of identification of the offender as it is concealed through the use of several networks. So policy makers can help by working with cybercrime experts to establish internationally accepted criteria for attribution, evidence, and cooperation in pursuing cyber, criminal, cyber criminals and bringing them to justice. So if there are cyber attacks, of course, we have to have cyber defense. So frontier technologies like AI, robotics, quantum computing, and the ever evolving adoption of the internet of things, cloud computing, blockchain, and remote walk working or distance learning models represents the future of our digital world. But as hackers get more sophisticated, so are the tools to stop them. And some popular forms of cybersecurity technology include artificial intelligence, AI and machine learning, intrusion detection and prevention systems, anti-malware, mobile de device management, network access control, next generation fire firewalls, and authentication and authorization. However, it will be shown that even these tools are inadequate. So what is the weakness or inadequacy of traditional cyber defense? Uh, what was said by a IT uh, uh, expert, it was because of the static nature of solutions. Most solutions are static in nature. For example, computing devices, systems, and data are within a fortress which has layers of defense such as access firewalls, intrusion detection and intrusion prevention systems, anti-malware software, access control systems, continuous monitoring systems and lock systems. And if an attacker can bypass the layers of defense, then they can ac get access to valuable information. So uh, it is also said that it's inflexible. There is no integrated approach. So traditional cyber defense is not flexible in dealing with variations of attacks or with zero day attacks. So the available approaches are either only about strategies or only about tactics. There is no integrated approach that deals with both levels in a systematic way. So what is needed is a new dynamic cyber defense that integrates both levels. So let's look at this. I'm not very tax savvy, but I can see that um, I can understand the logic behind it. So here, uh, what is recommended is the mobile target defense. In this case, it is designed to confuse the attackers by continuous and dynamic changes, which is intended to increase the cost, complexity and failure rate of the attack. And then this one, mimicry defense, it aims to improve the anti attack capability of information devices through endogenous mechanism of its construction. If you can understand that. So then now the countries, countries are going towards cyber resilience. So we have at the, if you look at this picture, you have the cyber security at the, at the center, cyber resilience around here, and then the residual risk is the cyber risk. So here we'll be mitigating mitigating the risk, mitigating the risk, those two levels. So let's look at the world government's approach. It appears that governments are pumping up on building cyber resilience since February 2022 due to the ever escalating cyber threats from state actors and criminal groups. So without continuous investment and commitment to cyber resilience, organizations will be more vulnerable to cyber attacks and thus more likely to endure reputational, financial, operational, and safety impacts. So let's look at the United States of America. In US, the US President Joe Biden had signed the Strengthening American Cyber Cybersecurity Act 2022 on March 15. So this act requires companies dealing with critical infrastructure 
to report sub substantial cyber attacks to the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, which is the CISA, within 70 hour, 72 hours, and all ransomware payments within one day. So what this disclosure law or regulation has done was to change the perception of a cyber attack from a private company matter to a public threat or disorder. This legis legislation comes as part of a trend following the Colonel Pipeline attack in May 2021, when President Biden signaled a new role for cybersecurity and asked for a whole of government approach to cyber threats. So at the attack is a reminder of growing cyber threats to critical infrastructure, while also showing why providers of essential services are ripe targets for cyber criminals. So the European Union, the European Union has followed suit with several new directives and regulations and additional funding, specially aimed at enhancing the EU cyber resilience and the role of EU institutions, as well as facilitating greater cooperation between member state bodies. So in response to Russia's invasion, the EU deployed for the first time the Cyber Rapid Response Team to assist Ukraine with mitigating the cyber threats. <clears throat> the cyber, cyber, rapid, uh, cyber Rapid Response Teams allow the member states to help each other to ensure a higher level of cyber resilience and collectively respond to cyber incidents. So support is given in monitoring the threat landscape, detecting and mitigation of cyber attacks, or supporting the further investigation of cyber attacks. So the eight to 12 cybersecurity experts are pulled from six participating EU member states, which is Croatia, Estonia, Lithuania, Netherlands, Poland, and Romania. So the CRRTS were activated following a request from Ukraine to help the country's institutions facing cybersecurity challenges. And that's why the 2022 uh, cyber attack was thwarted. Now the group of 20, G20. So the G20 is a premier forum for international cooperation on the most important aspects of the international economic and financial agenda. So it brings together the world's major advanced and emerging economies. Members include Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Canada, China, Indonesia, Italy, Japan, Republic of Korea, Mexico, Russia, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, and Turkey, the United Kingdom, the United States, and the European Union. Malaysia and Singapore are not there because they're not big enough. So G20 created a digital economy working group in 2016 However, its attention to cybersecurity has been lacking. It is more focused on promoting uniform cybersecurity best practices across the digital economy. So it was rec recommended that the G20's attention to cybersecurity should be more focused on getting nation states to agree not to attack economies. The efforts should not only focus on helping the victims, but also to restrain the offenders. So G20 should design an agreement that defines critical infrastructure and to solicit consensus from member states that they will not attack it. So this definition should include the world's financial system that is, is the most important infrastructure to the global economy. So according to this person from Forbes, the G20 has the economic might to impose punishing section, sanctions against those who violate the rules. This could all be executed through due process with an independent cybercrime body referring cases to the International Criminal Court where any offending state would be able to defend itself. So UK's national cyber strategy also, <clears throat> they want to set up, the, uh, promote UK's interest in cyberspace and they want to be ahead of the advers adversaries and also, they want to be a responsible and democratic cyber power. Now let's look at Malaysia's cybersecurity strategy. So the government of Malaysia <coughs> launched the Malaysia Cybersecurity Strategy 2020-2024 with an allocation of US $434 million to step up the national cybersecurity preparedness or resilience and upgrade the country's cybersecurity measures. <clears throat> so 
So the MCSS outlines five strategic pillars as guiding principles to improve the country's cybersecurity management over the next five years. So the first pillar, uh, first pillar is to boost national governance and cybersecurity management by improving Malaysia's critical ICT infrastructure. Uh, the second pillar focuses on bolstering current cybersecurity laws by reviewing related red legislation and formulating new laws on cybersecurity. Thirdly, empowering world-class innovation, technology, R&D, and industry. And fourthly, improving cybersecurity talents in Malaysia, creating awareness and education. Fifth pillar, uh, it, it talks about strengthening global collaboration and leveraging regional cooperation to protect its cyberspace. So, my recommendations here for ASRICA is that ASRICA should design its own integrated and dynamic cyber defense framework that is systematic and cohesive. So this one, uh, uh, a model framework can be uh, uh, designed here. So also to promote active cyber defense capability through advanced defense technologies and also to build on its cyber resilience through regional cooperation and effective cyber laws. That's all from me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your uh, kind speech. Uh, değerli hocamıza bu kıymetli uh, bildirisi için çok teşekkür ediyoruz. Hocamızın da vurguladığı gibi iç güvenlik kavramı uh, 21. Uh, yüzyılda no. teknolojinin Thank gelişmesiyle you. daha doğru there is internal no. security. There is no internal. Uh, there is. A, we would like to thank the professor for the. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I don't have a translation of your discussion. Can you hear me? I'm in English channel. Uh, uh, I'm uh, uh, taking a summary about your speech. The other. Uh, um, uh, other people okay and then if you uh, have uh, any question we ask you as a english okay okay <laughs> okay <laughs> um, tamam 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 evet eee hocamız eee ben hani kısaca da özetlemek istedim çok da kıymetli bilgiler ver to make a summary of what she said she provided very good, valuable information. Uh, we know that this is important. Uh, we know that there is a development of technology. And in geographical 